Hey guys, how's it going? It's Rust Belt Collector here, and what do we have here but another Black Series figure, this time from the Clone Wars, and this time the illustrious bounty hunter Cad Bane. This is one of the, like, the newest wave, I think. It came along with the Incinerator Trooper and other figures. I don't really remember all what comes in this line. It is part of the Star Wars The Clone Wars series, so it's got that nice yellow color. And it would line up with the, like, Super Commando from the Walmart exclusive line. I don't have that figure, so I can't show you how those boxes would line up but that's really where it would go. We don't have any indication over on this side of any other figures that will continue the line. I know sometimes people will kind of like spot a corner of a elbow or something and be like, oh, the next figure, the next line is going to be, you know, this. I don't know, there's nothing there, but there is a little corner of the, uh, the Senate building there though, so maybe in the next one as that finishes out, we'll see something like Commander Fox, a re-release with like the new mold, or maybe we'll get like a Shock Trooper similar to the Camino Trooper. Who knows, but hey, it's fun to speculate. Anyways, yeah, your standard new box, not much to talk about there. Nice artwork on the side of Cad Bane. I really like how they've done these art pieces. They look really good on every box that I've seen. On the back here, a little bit of a bio about the character, as well as the same art piece there. Legal stuff, blah bitty blah bitty blah bitty. don't put it in your mouth or you might choke. There's the price, that was uh, at GameStop, $22.99. It was actually the 20% off day, so I think I got this and the Incinerator Trooper for less than $20 a pop, so that was pretty awesome. The figure looks great in this little window bubble with the two blasters and the character. This is the mainline release, so it does not come with the Toto 360 droid or anything else. Just the figure and the blasters, but it does look really nice in this little picture window. However, I think it would look a little bit better out of the packaging, so let's do that right now. And here he is, all out of the packaging, looking quite epic in his style. I always loved Cat Bane's design after like the classic western, you know, gunslinger style, and this really does capture that pretty fantastically. As always, we'll take a look at the accessories first, and then we'll break down the figure and all the nice articulation and everything else about it. First up, he comes with these two blasters. They are identical, so we'll just take a look at one right here. Really nice paintwork on this, like the grips are painted brown, the barrel has a nice little bit of black there, and overall, these look really sleek, very nice in that silver. They fit perfectly into his holster, and they're not going to fall out. They kind of tab in there just a little bit. He also comes with this simple little satchel here. Nicely sculpted, no real paint apps, just cast in brown with a slightly bendy plastic little bit here to wrap around the figure, and that goes on just fine with no problem. And then finally, what's a good gunslinger without his flat-brimmed hat? Here is Cad Bane's. It looks really nice. A little bit of paintwork there, a little bit of weathering along the edge there, and that just kind of friction holds onto his head like so, and honestly, it looks pretty good. You can kind of get it all dark and mysterious like that, or you can kind of tilt it back a little bit like he's uh, inspecting the weather, like, hmm, is it sunny out today? Yes, it, it seems to be pretty sunny. Hmm. Time to hunt some Jedi. So yeah, honestly, just like first impressions, this figure is really, really cool. I'm going to say that a lot probably in this review, and uh, it kind of caught me by surprise because I really wasn't looking to get this figure. Like, I'm not a completionist. I typically collect clone troopers in the Black Series line. I focus on three and three quarter inch, yada, yada, yada. And then I saw this figure and I was like, whoa, they really outdid themselves with this figure. And I am, I'm here for it. I'm all here for it. I definitely am excited. That I wish this would be like every figure, like the clone troopers and everything would have this amount of detail just jam-packed into them. Sorry about your hat there, but we'll just put that back on. There we go. But yeah, I mean, if you take the hat off, here you go. You got this, uh, this nice new Duros head sculpt. I think that's how you say the alien species that he is. Bright red eyes, little teeth detail there. The rebreather thing on his back there, that's nicely painted in like a silver. Then you have this dry brushing going down his torso and his shirt. It looks really cool, pops out a lot of that detail. A lot of little silver details on his gun belt and his jacket. Same with his outer coat. And then down on the legs, there's more dry brushing going on, which just really pops out the detail on this sculpt. Kind of reminds you of that, like, the hand-painted 3D style that they did with the Clone Wars. So 
It's a nice blending of the realistic and the animated, I feel like. They definitely outdid themselves with all of this detail. I mean, a prime example of that is right here on the gauntlets. Just look at all the sculpt work, the detail, the fine little paint apps for all the buttons and knobs and everything, and it just looks so good. Like, I am surprised that I like this figure as much as I do. Down here on the boots, he's got like the little uh, jetpack boosters that he uses in some of the episodes, and uh, some nice detail there on the boots as well. I don't know if that's, you know, show accurate or not, but it looks cool. It does look cool. Now let's talk about the articulation on this figure, since this is an entirely new sculpt. We definitely got to get into that. We'll take off his little cap there. We'll take off this uh, bandolier, this little satchel. I don't know what you want to call it, but yeah. So at the neck here, we've actually got something kind of interesting going on. There's like a, a double ball joint system going on where the neck and the, uh, the head are on separate ball joints. So you can kind of see how it's swiveling there at the, at the torso. Then also, if you hold that, there's also a ball joint here at the top of the head. This allows for a lot of articulation, side to side tilt, forward and back, and then, you know, all sorts of everything in between. At the shoulders, you can see there, there is a butterfly joint going on, although it's kind of impeded just by the hard plastic uh, tunic, so not a lot to say about that. It's nice they included it, it's, but it's not really anything that is uh, functional with this hard plastic or harder plastic it's not soft goods so harder plastic tunic long coat trench coat you know gunslinger coat duster uh every synonym for a long coat uh, and then there's a swivel and a hinge so you can go all the way around up well past 90 and that is really nice there's also a swivel up in here and i like that they actually attached his little hoses and everything to the bicep instead of to the shoulder that way you can swivel this all which ways and it's not going to put stress on those uh, those tubes then at the elbow there's also another joint you have a hinge and a swivel there so that swivels hinges up well past 90 goes and extends all the way to there you can even like break his elbow it extends so far and then at the wrist you have a hinge and a swivel so swivel all the way around and in this instance, they actually did a double up and down joint. So this hand is up and down, perfect for gunslinging. And then this hand is also up and down. So I appreciate that they did that. They had some foresight there to uh, include the up and down wrist on both hands. That way you can hold the blasters a lot better and pose it a lot better than if one of these was an in and out wrist. Whew, that was all a mouthful, but here we go onto the torso. There's a ball joint in here. So you can get lots of side to side, forward and back, really good range of articulation there. And then down at the hips, you have a ball joint with a thigh swivel. So you can get out to about there, forward and back, and then you can swivel that thigh around if you need to. I like the new design that they went with here. It, it definitely kind of stands out. There's definitely a, an edge there that you can see but it does help hide it just a little bit, kind of makes it feel a little bit more fabric-like, a little bit more seamless. And then they did the same thing here with the knee where it is a single jointed knee and they've sculpted the pants down a little bit over that joint so it's not as noticeable that it actually is a joint. But here again, we have a hinge and a swivel, so hinge down to about 90 and then that can swivel at the knee joint, nice back and forth. And then you have a hinge and a rocker here at the foot, so you can actually get all the way pointed like that. He could do ballet very nicely. And then you can bring it all the way forward and rocker it back and forth. So, yeah, I mean, this is a really fantastic Black Series figure. Once again, just like with Ahsoka, I'm kind of disappointed that we're not getting this level of detail in a TVC figure because, holy crap, Cad Bane in this style in a three and three quarter inch figure would be absolutely amazing. But I am not gonna complain that much because we got it in Black Series. I'm kind of a dual collector when it comes to very specific characters. And this is one that I'm happy to have in Black Series. It's just my personal preference that, man, I wish this had come out in TVC. That would be absolutely game changing if it had this level of detail in a three and three quarter inch figure. But yeah, I mean, I don't know if there's much else to say about this. I mean, it is a great figure. If you can find it, definitely pick it up because you don't want to miss out on such a classic character. And, uh, you know, it, 
I don't know what else to say. I mean, it is a great Black Series figure. It's been a while since we've gotten something that I would actually hold in my hands and be like, this is great in all aspects. I love the new Clone Trooper mold. I love the new Stormtrooper mold. I love the Purge Troopers that have come out. But all of them have little issues like the warped helmets or the misshapen helmets or, you know, paint app issues. But this is like the total package. It's got great sculpt. Nothing's warped or deformed. Everything's pretty screen accurate from what I can tell. And it just, it's a great figure. What can I say? Uh, I guess I can't say anything except that it's a great figure. So, yeah, there we go. Cad Bane in the 6-inch Black Series line. If you, uh, if you like this video, if you like this review and my totally random style of reviewing figures, uh, consider subscribing and liking this video and commenting and all those things that YouTubers always say to do. Um, just, you know, give it a, give it a think, give it a thought. You know, if you like to do that sort of thing, I do appreciate it. As always, there's a link down in the description to my social media pages, as well as a link to uh, my merch and an address. That's my P.O. Box address. If you send anything into the channel, I will be sure to do an unboxing video here on the channel. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate all of you, and I will catch you all in the next video.